Hey guys, welcome to the CPG headquarters. My name is Christian Saab. I'm the founder and owner of CPG Recruitment Inc. And this is my good friend, colleague, and partner, Natalie Peters, who uh, was once a franchise broker and then was a true believer in our brand and decided to have a location for herself. And now she is a franchise developer with our company. And we've decided to make this video specifically for the person who is considering a business and is um, out there in the franchise world looking for what's the best fit for them. And we're going to have a conversation today just about our model, what we're doing, and how we're disrupting the industry a little bit, and just for you to have a chance to get to know us and the opportunity that we have. So thank you, Natalie, for, for being here uh, for the purpose of this video. Natalie's going to be the fran playing the hat of a franchise broker, and she's going to be asking me all kinds of questions on behalf of the person who's considering becoming an owner of a business, um, she'll be asking me some tough questions and you'll be listening to our conversation. So Natalie, thank you for being here and, and I'll let you kind of get right into it. Feel free Absolutely. to say a few words if you'd like and share your story and we'll jump right into it. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so I think you covered most of it. You know, I, um, when you and I first connected and you told me about the business opportunity at the time. He said, Hey, I have this business. I want to franchise it. And it really caught my attention. Uh, what you've done over the last few years has been really inspiring. So it's really hard for me not to jump in and, and, and be a part of it. So I'm very happy that I did. And, and I love being part of the, the business and the franchise. And I know that other people would really benefit from it as well. So um, I would love to ask you some questions because obviously mm -hmm. these people watching uh, want to learn more about CPG. So let's jump in. You know, a lot of people don't necessarily think of recruitment when they think of buying a business. So why recruitment? Tell, tell me about how you came to, uh, to be in the recruitment business and what you love about this industry. Well, I'll, I'll open up by saying, you know, when I was, uh, when five years ago when I was starting this company, I actually was an engineer and I owned a car wash. So I didn't even come from this industry. Um, it was an accident, an intentional accident of finding this industry. Uh, for me, there was a good period in my life where I, I knew starting a business was going to be hard. And I had already started my first business, which was the car wash business. And, and I didn't want to be the type that every few years I had to start a new company. So I was very picky with um, what type of a business will be my forever business. And instead of focusing on an industry, instead of focusing on um, a specific type of work, I said, you know, what's the lifestyle I want to have? What kind of business do I want to have? I more so focus on certain characteristics that a business should have um, before uh, deciding on what kind of business that was. So I, I spent a lot of time sitting with many business owners of all walks of life and different businesses, understanding different business models that were out there. And then... I kind of put together a list of five characteristics that I said, whatever business I decide to join must have these five characteristics. Um, one of them, the first one right off the bat, I said to myself, I want to be part of a high ticket item. I don't want to sell something for a hundred dollars. I want to sell something for thousands, if not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars for the reason that the type of customer I wanted to have someone who's spending 20, 30,000 with you in one shot is a totally different customer than someone who's spending a hundred dollars with you. Absolutely. So the, it's a different type of people that I deal with. I wanted to deal with businesses. I wanted to deal with established people of high net worth. So, um, no matter what I was selling, the, the decision wasn't made yet on what I was selling. I just said, I wanted a high ticket item. That was point number one. Um, two, is I wanted to have to be part of a business that gave me good cash flow or residual income. Um, still, again, emphasizing I don't know what, what I was gonna be selling, but it had to have that element. So a high ticket item, but also a residual cash flow uh, business. Um, very, very, very important for me. Uh, second, or third, was a no geographical limitations. So when I was running my, my car wash business, I was limited. Where I could make money, I had to be in the city that I was in. I was from, I'm from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. If I wanted to transact in my car wash, I had to be in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, at specifically my shop that was there in order to do my work. I didn't want to be limited to a location. I wanted to be able to provide a service or sell a product or whatever it may be with out geography. I wanted to be able to transact anywhere in the world. High ticket item, residual income, and customers anywhere in the world, while myself 
being anywhere in the world because I wanted to have a lifestyle element to it. I wanted to be able to travel and just take my laptop, take my phone and be able to do my business wherever I am. If I wanted to pack up and go for two months on a vacation, well, I don't have to shut down my business. I could right. keep working as I enjoy my life. So that was very important for me. Um, and then of course, being able to, to grow my business with customers around the world and trying different, playing with different industries, that was important to me as well. Yeah. So um, how, how did you land on recruitment then? Well, we're, we're getting there. That, that was an accident, but most importantly, there was two more points that I wanted to bring up. So two more points that, um, as far as characteristics goes with the first question you asked was, um, I wanted to be part of a necessity, not a luxury service. Mm -hmm. That was very important for me too. Absolutely. So I didn't want to be selling something that's a nice to have. I wanted to be selling something that's a must have. Right. Um, when someone pays me, I wanted them to pay me because they needed to, not because it was just a, a splurge. And, and lastly, I wanted to be part of an industry that's, that's scalable. Something that's very easy to teach and duplicate and have other people be successful in. There are certain things, you know, every business is scalable, but there's a different levels of difficulties to scale. So I wanted ease of scalability. So that was, those were my five. But to answer your second question is how did I come across recruiting? That was a complete accident. That was, um, the, the story behind that was um, I was running my detailing business and I came across a facility where they deliver Amazon packages and I set up a small team there, just think it as a side hustle. And the dispatcher there, I built a relationship with him and he tells me one day after a few months go by, I'm really fast tracking the story here, but. He says to me, he says, Christian, I really need help finding more drivers. Can, do you have some time to, to do that and I'll let you build your team? So I started building my team with drivers, not thinking about recruitment whatsoever, just literally just building an Amazon delivery service team. And then um, I started seeing it being very lucrative. So I was kind of bragging to a friend, telling him, you know, I hit it good. I've been finding these drivers, building up a team there. Um, just casually, this was on a weekend, we were just chatting and then one day he calls me a couple weeks later. He says, you've been finding a bunch of drivers. A friend of mine, he owns a landscaping company. He needs help finding some people. Can you help him? And uh, right there in that moment, in that phone call, I was like, wait a minute. Hold on a second here. I'm like, I started, that's when recruitment came into my lens from that one phone call. And this was, I've shortened the story. This is two years of me searching of what kind of a business I wanted. That one phone call hit of well, why can't I find you know employees for this right. this person? I started thinking about it. I said, well, if I looked in the as I looked into the recruitment industry, I was like, well, it's a high ticket item. It has residual cash flow. It's no there's no limitations. I could recruit for anyone anywhere in the world at any point in time. It's a necessity, not a luxury, and it's very teachable. Like you know, if I wanted to teach someone how to conduct interviews, it's a lot easier than teaching someone how to build a driveway or build a house or whatever it may be. It's so much easier. So then right there in one phone call, all the check boxes were hit. Just that moment I saw that, that it, the answer just popped right in front of me. I was like, that's the one. Right. And I knew, I never even considered, heck, I was an engineer at Chrysler. I was the guy that I was like, what, what, I, I laughed at HR. Yeah. I laughed at like yeah. the recruitment. Department. I was like, these guys, HR, recruitment departments, are just there to be in the way. I'm like, I, I wasn't, I was a total right. opposite personality. Right. And but, when but, it, but you saw the need, you know, you're, you're, you're oh recruiting gosh. for um, logistics and then now you're recruiting for landscaping, mm -hmm. construction, you know, you know, every, every business owner that you talk to, that's usually the biggest pain point is finding good people. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's something that, that they really struggle with. Right. And, and you're solving that problem for them. And I think if we give like the person watching this video a moment to just think of like, where do you work right now? Just ask around, like, do we need staff in the place yeah. we work? I could promise you the answer is yes. Like yeah. every company in every place in the world is dying for people all the time. This is right. a very old industry that is a very high demand industry. Right. Um, and you know, I believed in the problem right away. I was like, Oh my God, like this makes sense. Like I'm never going to run out of work. Every yeah. company needs people Absolutely. and every company is complaining about people. Right. So if I could get into the people game and help them fix their people problems, I'm never going to run out of work. Right. It's right. impossible. Now, impossible. the other the other side of that coin is that there's a, a ton of companies that need employees, but there are a lot of recruitment agencies out there as well. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I did not um, realize right away is the difference between CPG and other recruitment companies. Mm -hmm. There there is a difference between the, the between the temp agency model and what we do here at CPG. Can you explain that for the yeah, people? So, the so people what, what a lot of people don't know, there's a big difference between a staffing agency, temp agency, and a recruitment firm. 
Staffing agencies, they solve the following problem where project-based, a company needs X number of bodies, a certain head count, 100 people, 300 people for a short period in time. They ask for those bodies to be sent to them. A company doesn't want to hire people internally. They just want to contract, essentially borrow employees from a company. That's why staffing agencies exist. That's why a lot of factories use them, uh, manufacturing use them. A lot of, um, if locally they're building a new bridge for you, you know, a company's coming in, they need 300 people to build this project over six months. They essentially borrow staff. That's the temp agency model. Um, where the staffing company has all these people employed, they send them to the business that needs the bodies and they bill them by the hour. Um, the recruitment side of the business is a little bit more of the opposite. Very similar where we're finding people for a company, but they are looking for assets to bring into their business. They're looking for specific people that need to be the right fit for the company. Now, the key difference is the approach. It's very similar to, I like using the analogy where you're either buying a Ferrari and, or you're buying a Honda Civic. Right. Now, if you go to a facility where they're making a Honda Civic, they're literally making 1,500 a day. Right. Whereas with a Ferrari, they make 1,500 in a year. That's if, that, that might even be a big number. Yeah. So there's a certain finesse, a certain level of attention to detail when it comes to recruitment. If, if a Ferrari was made 1,500 of them in a day, it wouldn't be as valuable as it is. That's and it wouldn't be as much of a precious asset compared and uh, compared to a Honda Civic, for example, right? So, and at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with either or. There's, you know, you, you need Honda Civics in the world and you need Ferraris in the world. You, you need the two. So the problem comes where there's that sour taste with businesses is the majority, 95% of the businesses out there from the staffing recruitment world, 95% is staffing. And companies they don't have a choice when they look up I, when they say i need to hire someone specific and they just look up recruiting companies staffing companies they end up talking to a staffing agency who's at the end of the day not going to say no to a phone call saying no we can't help you at the end of the day they want they're in business and they're going to take whoever but their strategy is geared around volume not quality so then they end up if the customer is asking for one specific person they end up dropping the ball because they use the same volume tactic rather than listening to the customer and learning their culture and their vision and why they need a specific person. They just do the traditional, oh, you need a five-year engineer uh, with mechanical experience, done. I'll send you all these resumes and they just bomb them with resumes and it's like, well, no, yeah, I'm hiring you so you could send me one or two key people, not right. give me a thousand resumes and I don't have the time for it. And then they end up sending them the wrong people. And it's a frustrating process because of the customers looking for quality, not quantity. Mm -hmm. So staffing agencies tend to sign up for work that they should. It's better off for them not to do, but they just, they just do it, right? And that's where we get that sour taste. And that's where we have to, we educate our customers where if a customer came to me and said, I need 300 bodies, I tell them, no thanks. I can't do that. I don't have the skill set of giving you quantity. But you ask for five, 10, 15 key people that you need throughout the course of a year, that's a different story. There's an element of strategy that's there. So that's the key difference between recruiting and staffing. There's a lot more staffing than there is recruiting, which is nice for me because I get to stand out from the competition. Like you're gonna, I encourage the person watching this to type in staffing company in their city. You're gonna see the map light up with a bunch of staffing companies. And if you do your digging, they're gonna all be temp agencies contract. It's gonna be very hard for you to find a company that's actually a recruitment business. And that's the nice part. So there's that misconception, there's a lot of competition, but I don't feel like there really is because I'm like the only one in my city, in my area, of all the cities that we have, all the locations we have, they're one of the, probably the only ones compared to all the staffing companies that are there. Right. Well, and I noticed that myself too, talking to clients now, when I go in and I'm, I'm asking all these questions about the position and really trying to figure out, you know, the, the root of what they're looking for and, and what they need. A lot of them go, I've never been asked these questions before um, mm -hmm. because, because they just, they don't take the time to actually figure out what that client needs, which is probably why they're not sending them the right people necessarily, mm -hmm. uh, but they're sending them people, like you said, quantity over quality. Tell me, a lot of these people that are, that are watching are considering becoming entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to get into business for themselves. Tell me why CPG is such a good choice. I, I, I can tell you why I chose it, but, but I'd love to hear, um, you know, in your words, why is CPG a better way to get in, go into entrepreneurship than maybe some of the mm -hmm. uh, other options out there? Well, what I saw, the whole reason why I franchised this and 
design this business opportunities because, you know, like I was able to come into this industry, not from it. As a matter of fact, all my staff, everybody on our team, there wasn't, there isn't anybody on our team that is from this industry until very recently. Our, our Houston location, they have a recruitment background, but up right. until that point, we were able to prove time and time and again that we can come into an industry, do very well, not being from it. Um, because of, again, the simplicity of being able to learn it yeah. and, um, and because the problem is so prevalent that you know any business is just looking for help from anybody who just could provide the staff that they need, right? So um, I saw that and I knew like how this business changed my life for way better. And um, I just felt that I could duplicate this. And as far as a fulfillment from my own personal side, it would just make me feel absolutely, I could only imagine how great I would feel if I saw a hundred locations of successful entrepreneurs that you know were, I was able to duplicate because of like what we did over here, right? right? And, and I got a glimpse of that when we had our workshop um, the, other, the other month when everyone was here, like all of, all of our locations are just seeing all the happy people and and the success we were able to build already in a short time that that's my own personal motivation. But to the person watching is, is this really is a very teachable model that it's the number one problem for businesses. Like you go into any business, it is their biggest headache. It's their biggest headache. There literally has to be a fire in their business that that moment that will make it more important than staffing. Otherwise staffing is the number one thing all the time. Right. right? So, you know, it really is a model that, we decide that it's very affordable. It, it doesn't cost a lot to start a location, especially we said this is very doable from home. We don't require a location. I know our competitors do. They say you have to get a location. You have to have a certain number of employees, which give you overhead right off the bat. You know, there really isn't a cost Absolutely. to when you start with us. You pay your, your, your fees to join us, but then your, your monthlies, is there isn't any. It, we, we give you a whole grace period for three months and then from there it's like a couple hundred bucks a right. month of technology fee like what right. business gives you a literally a zero expense running cost from day one so very affordable it makes and, it a lot a lot more um you minimize the risk but by, by not yeah. you know investing as much to get, get yeah. into the business i know for me the biggest part was the flexibility you know mm -hmm. and the lifestyle that, that you can have with this business I call this, you know, kind of true lifestyle business because it really does allow you to run the business around your lifestyle rather than trying to um, curve your lifestyle to, you mm -hmm. know, to support a business. And, and I know for me, that was one of the biggest uh, benefits of joining this type of model. Well, one of the things that I personally don't like about franchises, they have too many rules. Like it's like getting, an, getting yourself another job with a, an ownership hat. Like, you got to come in and this is what you got to do. One, two, three, four. That's it. You're like a robot for them, right? Right, right. And, and that's that's fine. But for some people, it's like, listen, man, I just want to be an entrepreneur, live a life, be part of an, a system that works, be part of a solution for, for my customers. And, you know, you got your location. And if you ever want to pack up and leave with your family to go somewhere else, you shouldn't have to sacrifice your business. You could take it that's with true. you. There's a lot of places where, you know, a lot of businesses, you buy a territory. And if you need to move, well, you can't take it with you. Right. Right. Absolutely. And that didn't make any sense to me. Like if I'm building something, I want to be able a business just like, just like how I started this company. It didn't come, I didn't go into recruitment and then my life came. It was, I really thought about my life first, mm -hmm. the things that I wanted. And then I found the recruitment business and the recruitment business was a solution to my lifestyle that I wanted. And it was very similar to the points that we talked about earlier, the types of people I wanted to transact with, the, the lifestyle I wanted to live as far as being off of a laptop and a phone. Like that was my own personal life. Some people, they're like, no, I want to be local. I want to be established in one place. They don't want to have customers around the world. Absolutely. It's, that was my lifestyle, right? And essentially what we're doing is we're meeting a lot of people that want that similar lifestyle of that flexibility to be anywhere in the world doing this business. And, and growing this around their family, their lifestyle, what they want. Because if it's not giving, whether it's a business, or whether it's a job, it's about if your job isn't making your life better, you're going to hate it. Absolutely. That's why people quit their jobs because it's like, well, I've got to drive and commute all day long and then I miss out on driving the kids to school, whatever it is. So then they end up quitting that job to find something that accommodates their life. At the end of the day, it's their life that we want to learn about. And that's our discovery calls with our people that we meet. 
the leads as they come in is really I'm I'm asking the question of what are you trying to accomplish in your personal life? Yeah. Because I'm not afraid to tell you, listen, this isn't the business. This isn't the business for you. Like, I want to be a solution to what you're trying to accomplish. Right. And if if we're a solution to what you're trying to accomplish personally, then you're gonna succeed and thrive. And all you gotta do from there is is work and get it done and live the life you want. And in ten years, you'll be able to tell the world how awesome your life has been. That's what we want to accomplish here. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. let's talk about money because you like making money. I like making money. Yeah. The person watching this is buying a business to make money. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about, you mentioned earlier how that, you know, we're a high ticket item. We also have the option for residual income. Mm-hmm. So can you explain a little bit more um, as to how you earn both those types of Yeah, we, we, were, we were a little innovative actually with, I found that in the, the recruitment world, our, a model didn't exist. So the traditional model, which we have is one way, is our finder's fee model. Every recruitment business will charge a percentage of someone's salary. So if you get a person a job at a company and that person's salary is 100000 the, pers- the finder's fee is generally 20% of that person's salary. So us as a recruitment company, we will get paid $20,000 for finding that person. So nothing wrong with that. Awesome model. Again, you're getting paid 20000 to fill a position. That's a good number. That's not a light number by any means. So that's the high ticket portion. Now... Um, initially the first couple years we were running this business just on that model and what I found like we always did well and we always had money in the account but you had these months where it's like zero zero then it was like 50,000 in revenue then it's like maybe 5,000 in revenue then another 50,000 then zero then it was just like all over the place so then I'm like how do we stabilize that and I and I found a bit of a sweet spot where with companies that have high turnover companies that Um, Because this model, this finder's fee model, if I were to backtrack it, it only works for a company that says, I'm looking for a key person and I'm willing to pay big to find that person. So the only customers we were having were the type that was asking for one, two, three, four, five people in a year. Well, we said, well, what about the companies that are with high turnover? The restaurant industry, the manufacturing industry, the warehousing industry, where they have one person doing all the recruiting on top of all the HR and they're like, I just don't want to do interviews anymore, pre-screening, all this stuff. Well, we said, well, what if we could still approach these people and um, or these companies and say, listen, we could take the recruitment off your place and we'll be an extension of your HR. Pay us a monthly amount, anywhere between five and $10,000 a month. And um, we're now part of your team. So that stabilized things for us. We found a good handful of customers that proved out the concept and we found it to be very successful where companies love having us instead of them hiring an employee to have to deal with it and um, you know, training that person, they're bringing in a team of experts to just take recruitment off their plate. So that stabilized things for us where I know, okay, every month I'm picking up checks from certain companies. The stability as far as cash flow is very clean and then now the finder's fees are just awesome bonuses. That's when we get a big check, it's awesome. It's just coming in, that's on top. My, right. How I balance my books is the most, the retainer customers that I have, they cover all my expenses. And then the, the finder fee customers, those are the ones that are like, it's just fun money now at this point. Right. So um, that's how we, now we're teaching every location we have. This is, you know, you should balance your customer base to have a little bit of both, right? right? And um, it works. Absolutely, it works. Absolutely. Yeah, and I've seen it. Uh, I've seen both of those work. So, yeah. um, and th- they solve different problems for different types mm-hmm. of companies. So, uh, it, it's. I feel like you're almost widening now the audience of who we can help. Yeah, right? they're two. So. Your good point. They're two different value propositions. Yeah. So, for a company that's paying a finder's fee, the problem we're solving for them is we're finding them the right person that they can't find. But for the retainer model. It's, we're not promising on a very high quality person. It is more of our Honda Civic style. Right. <laughs> the, right. The, the volume based uh, model where it's, hey, you know what? The problem that I'm solving for you here is I'm just taking the work off your plate. Right. You're paying me for the work. But they're still direct hires. They're still the direct company. hires for the company. I'm not yeah. holding any payroll, nothing. I'm just the one that's, when we get 200 applicants, we're going through the 200, narrowing it down to five or 10 and passing it down to the right hiring manager. And Absolutely. we're on our way. Absolutely. So you talked about how you know this is one of the things that, that you teach the new owners when, mm-hmm. when they come in. Um, and one of the greatest things about CPG is the level of support that the new owners have. So can you take us a little bit through you know, a new owner comes on board. Tell us what's the process to get them launch their business, you know, kind of ready to open the doors on their business and start selling. 
Okay, no, that's a very good question. So, so at the end of the day, why, why franchise, right? Like the whole purpose of franchising is you don't want to start something from scratch and you're trying to shorten that time of education. Absolutely. Right? I, I always say you're saving yourself, you know, the 5, 10, 15 years of, mm. of trial and error of figuring yep. out what works, what doesn't work. Like for us, we've been in business now for, for four years, five years almost, and it's still a learning process. But the first two years were a write-off of essentially it was all learning, the, the amount of mistakes that we did. But we, we don't really call them mistakes. It's more so those were learning curves, right? Absolutely. And th there's a big one where now it's like with a, a franchise model, we're, we're coming in from day one saying, no, don't do this because we've done this before, right? We've yeah. seen practically everything in such a short period of time that, that – what we learned in two years, you're learning in a one month onboarding process with right. us, yeah, right? Absolutely. And, and um, you know, at the end of the day, it's for that person that doesn't need to have their name on the wall or anything like that. It's just like they want to be part of a proven system, get the ball rolling and start building their business with, without having to feel like they're alone. So I would say, you know, the, the most, really the biggest takeaway of that is on that comment is you're not alone, okay. right? Like when I started this company, I was alone. There was nobody here to hold my hand, say, no, Christian, you know, yeah, I had mentors, I had friends that guided me, but it's, you're not, I was alone, yeah. right? Nobody cares about the business as much as you mm -hmm. do when you're starting out uh, with a new company yeah. on your own, yes. right? But in this case, you're not, like say, you're not alone. You have this great support mm -hmm. system. And the one thing I love about you and the whole team at HQ is that everybody's just a phone call away or a text away. Yeah. Like you guys are so easy to access. Um, you know, anytime we, we have an issue, it's like, hey, I don't know how to deal with the situation. How can you help me? And, mm -hmm. and it's so quick and easy to find the answer. It, it really is. Like people just call me right off my cell phone. They call my, my team. You know, we got Paige over here. We've got everyone in the family here, even amongst other locations too. Yeah. Like I've got, Absolutely. I want all the locations communicating with each other, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, that's part of it. We do our monthly Mondays now where, where every month, first Monday of every month, the entire company, all the locations are on there. Um, every week we're touching base with each location. Um, that's just from a team spirit side of things. This is like, you know, you are not alone. We're here. If something's, something happened throughout your day as, as you're running your business, a little obstacle that came through, you, you call us. If I'm not answering the phone, it's because I'm on the phone with somebody else. I'll get right back to you. I'll call you within the hour, right? right. And it's, again, that ongoing, you're not by yourself. If you're having an issue. We've got the answers. Um, but, and of course, on top of that comes like all the other tools and resources that we've brought to the table too, right? Absolutely. So um, not being alone is one thing, but also at the end of the day, you need the right equipment. And you know, I've, when I first started the company, I remember spending $10,000 on software that just didn't work. Right. And then I remember spending $20 on software that was the best software ever. So there's a lot of our, our head office is really like a proving ground where we're constantly looking for the next best tool at our expense. Um, and then just rolling it out saying, use this tool, it works, it's awesome, and you're ready to go, it's been proven. Right. Right, so that's an insurance policy essentially, right? You know, they're getting every tool that they need um, from, from a recruitment standpoint. Um, and yeah, no, it's, it's very, very turnkey here. Yeah, very turnkey. So tell me, from the owner perspective, I know you wanna grow this to be a huge, um, mm -hmm. huge franchise across Canada, across the US, uh, internationally tell me who is your ideal owner you know the people that that we're bringing in now what kind of qualities should they have to be successful in this business it, it needs to be someone committed and I think the biggest misconception we were talking about this the other day is people think when they buy a franchise it's just automatic like you just hit an on switch and you're just making money right like you know even with the best brands in the world the biggest franchises in the world McDonald's for example that like you can't, you can't just, you're buying, a, if you could afford to buy a McDonald's and you get one, if you don't work, they're, you're going to fail. You're not going to make money and they're going to kick you out of the yeah. system. So, you know, that forget a, even a proven model. At the end of the day in franchising, it's, you're still a business owner. You still have to put in the time, the energy, even with the most proven model on the planet, you still have to work. Um, so that to me is, I don't want lazy people here. I don't want someone to be um, to just think that they can come in and just make money from day one. You can right. absolutely make money from day one here if you put in the effort. Like we've got a location right now that we're still in the onboarding phase and he's already texted me saying, I want to get through this onboarding because I already have customers. Like he's that ambitious, ready Motivated. to go. It gets me so excited, right? 
Um, whereas I'll be the first to admit, we have locations that have been here for three, four months and have just been struggling mm -hmm. simply because, oh, they're doing this part time or, oh, they're doing like, you know, they're not putting the effort. It's what, oh, I've been sick. Oh, I've been whatever. Well, you know what? You get what you pay for, right? <laughs> and so you, you, you get hungry. for the effort. You, you, you need to be ready yeah. to put it, to come in, to put in the work. You know yeah. that if you put in the work, you're going to mm -hmm. get the results, but yeah. you have to be willing to put in that work. You don't need experience in this industry. You got to believe in the problem and you got to believe in the industry. You got to be the one that says, yeah, I believe that every business needs help finding staff yeah. and I want in, I want into the Absolutely. game and I'm ready to learn. So Absolutely. that's one look, getting, being ready to learn. And then from there, achieving what you said you were going to do. Right, I'm gonna give you the tools that you need, but go, go do it, yeah. go do it. Right, like we're we're like a we we motivate here. We're right by your side. We're always here to help. It's the best environment. But at the end of the day, I could I could take you to the water, but I can't force you to drink. Right, yeah, and absolutely. we we want the people that just want to be winners. Yeah. They want to win at, at the end of the day, and they want to be the best in the world at it. And and we want to build a team that I, I don't need to have a thousand locations of, of people that don't want to be the best. I'm happy finding. 50 locations that are the best in the world and we all crush it. I'd rather that Absolutely. than having, again, the Ferrari concept versus Honda Civic concept. I, we, we have a winning, what we see with our customers, we know we're winning. We have recruiting companies that have been in our city here for 30 years and we are taking away their customers, not because we're targeting them, but because they're reaching out to us. Their employees are reaching out to us to work here because they see the culture that we have and they're like, what is this young, fresh, ready company that's doing things differently Absolutely. because we want to win at the end of the day and we want to fix people's problems. That's how we've been winning. Um, so, you know, if someone who's a solution driven person will do very well here and someone who's just ready to just win and understands that they, they want to build something and put in some effort, that that's the place to be right here. And it's, it's going to be worth every penny, every, even every energy of your time, it's going to be worth it. Absolutely. Well, you know, I believe in you because uh, I wouldn't have jumped on board and, and joined and bought a location myself if I didn't. Um, and I can, I can definitely say that your motivation comes through. You know, your desire to make sure your franchisees and owners succeed is, is definitely next to none. So thank you well, so much. You, you understand it from your end. Like you've been doing well because you believe in the problem and you, you understand it's the effort that you put in. It's well worth it. Like, I think it's even more worth it. Sometimes I think when you got paid by your first customer, you almost felt like you're ripping them off a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely, I did. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, did this guy really just? Okay. And the same thing happened to me when I got my first customer. I was like, am I really billing this guy this like, amount? Was it really that easy? And <laughs> same thing with our Edmonton yeah. location. She called me in a panic. She's like, I'm sending this guy a massive invoice. Yeah. I, I don't understand. Like, it didn't. I don't feel like I deserved it. And it's like. But you did because yeah. the problem is so big. Absolutely. The problem is so vast for them. You know, we were talking, you know, how companies would spend forty thousand dollars with us. How why would someone spend forty thousand to employ five people? Well, with these five people, they're going to make three hundred thousand in the next three months, for right. example. So right. for forty K to make three hundred, it's a no brainer. That's how these businesses think, yeah. right? There's just one example. So um, the effort that we put in is definitely rewarded. Um, and you know, we're, we want the right culture here. We want the right people. We want to be a team. We want to be a family. And we already are. And it's like, we just want to welcome the next person into our family. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I think today just, they got just a little bit of a glimpse of, of the Christian side motivation yep. and the passion behind the, the whole business. Um, and you know, I think if they join, if they're lucky enough to join, they're going to see a lot more of that. Well, so what's thanks. next, what's next is going to be, I want to highlight one more thing, the onboarding side. I would love to actually give people an idea of how simple and straightforward and how quick we could launch yeah. their business. Absolutely. So, so we've spent, especially I'll give thanks to Natalie on this cause she's a professional, an expert when it comes to designing training process. That was her background before you were even a, a franchise broker. Yeah. We've designed something that's absolutely world class where if you were to join us today, you go through a three week virtual onboard where it's very systemized. One week at a time, you're getting a new set of modules in preparation for your in person coming here to this office um, and and doing an in person for one whole week with us. And the whole goal by the end of that month is when you leave our office, you fully understand this industry to a T. You fully understand how we've positioned ourselves in the marketplace. You fully understand the value proposition. Mm -hmm. You've seen how a functioning, fully established CPG location runs. You're gonna be filling positions with my team over here. You're gonna be going on sales calls with my team over here. You're gonna see everything that's running. That By the time you head back um, from that three week virtual and the one week in person, you're gonna have a full strategy ready to go 
to launch your business when you're there, uh, when you're back home at your, at your location. So we've really designed this very seamless, quick to launch model. Absolutely. It's definitely very streamlined. And we're already seeing that with people going through mm -hmm. it right now. Like I said, they're, they're already um, targeting customers before they've even done the training. So, yes. you know, the whole point is to get that ramp up as fast as possible, get people making money as fast as possible, getting their return on investment as fast as possible. So, exactly. That's it. Perfect. Well, if you'd Thanks, like Natalie. to learn more, um, you know, Christian and I are always here to chat. And actually, your next call will be with Christian if you decide you want to uh, move forward with the business it will. as well. Awesome. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Natalie.